against, um, you know, another team. And and what better way to start the season than against um, an AFC East rival, you know, New York Jets. Um, they're not the New York Jets. They're the New, uh, New Jersey Jets, in my opinion. You know, Buffalo is the only, only New York football team. So, uh, but it's a great tradition that we have uh, playing against the Jets. Um, I think um, overall, uh, we lead that series by probably you know 10, 12 games or something like that, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. So it's it's a it's a great rivalry, always has been, and man, I can't wait, can't wait to see it. Okay, it looks like we're experiencing just a few technical. Mm -hmm. Looks like Maddie's I, I hear you. I hear you again, Maddie. I, I lost your lost your video, but I hear you. Sorry, guys. I get kicked off for a second. I lost <laughs> yeah. the internet there. Man, Zoom days are so weird. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a new age. Uh, totally different sitting at home. Uh, we are here, um, but this Zoom has been fun, uh, especially, you know, during the quarantine. Uh, so it's something else uh, we'll have to talk about with our grandkids and great grands or whatever. Definitely. And I've got to ask you about this team. What are your expectations? I mean, uh, high hopes for this team this season. They had a, a good season last year, went 10 and six, unfortunately lost in the first game of the playoffs. But we all know they added Stefan Diggs, they added Zach Moss, we got some mm -hmm. great draft picks. Uh, the defensive line is looking new, is looking full of life. Uh, they want to bring back the defense from last year when it comes to being a top three defense in the league. They want to get after the quarterback more. So what are some of your expectations uh, for this year's group? Um, I said earlier, you know, I, I could see, I could see us winning, you know, the same, you know, 10, 12, 13 games this year, no doubt about it. The, the thing is, um, as a player, you know, of course you want to win them all, but uh, in, in pro sports, you can, you have to make it to the postseason to have a chance to win, you know, a Super Bowl or whatever. Um, so in the back of all those guys' minds, you know, you, it's hard. You know, there's only been one undefeated team in the NFL history. So, uh, you know, you make it to the playoff and, and, and anything can happen. Uh, and, and I know that's where those guys' minds are, especially the guys that's been around for a long time. They've had the, the last two out of three years a taste of the playoffs. And, man, I know they're excited, um, especially with the new additions that we have there. And, uh, well, I just can't – I can't wait, especially to watch the defense. Um, you know, um, the young linebackers, they have another year experience under their belts, and um, they become leaders from re me reading and watching um, videotapes or whatever from, from this um, shortened preseason here, I guess you would call it uh, – see them stepping out and stepping, you know, stepping into a leadership role. That's what it's going to take um, for all guys um, to step up and step out and, 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 and be great teammates. Um, I, I truly believe that the other part of it is it's not believing the hype this year. You know, don't, don't buy into everything um, that people are saying, go out and prove it, do it. Definitely, definitely. So we have our first question that came in from our crowd. Remember, guys, mm -hmm. if you'd like to ask a question, you can just type in the chat box your first and last name. We will get to as many as possible. And our first one is from Shannon Hoffman. So Shannon, whenever you're ready, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Cornelius. It's Jeff. Hey, Can't what's wait going to on, see you. I hope to see your name on the wall someday. Soon we need you to get that up there. No, My question happen, is man. for... What advice could you, could you give our linebackers to get to the Super Bowl? You know, we got a bunch of young linebackers, and have mm -hmm. you been able to talk to them at all? No, um, um, especially quarantine. You know, I've, I've been stuck here in South Florida. Not a bad place to be, but I've been stuck here. Um, no, just uh, <clears throat> as I mentioned a second or two ago, um, it's not believing the hype, man. That's that's It's hard to do because, uh, especially now, you know, all eyes really are on, on on the team. You know, everybody's excited. You know, Tom Brady's going out of New England, and, um, and it seems as though, you know, it's a given that Buffalo is going to be the AFC East champion, but you still have to go out and play, man. And and, and the only way you get that banner uh, hung in Rich, uh, I say Rich Stadium, <laughs> Buffalo Bills Stadium now is 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 to go out and prove it, and that's what they have to do. You can't, you can't buy into um, all the hearsay. We have another question from Nicole mm -hmm. Denzel. Nicole, you can unmute yourself and then whenever you're ready. Jeff, thanks for that question. Hi, Cornelius. Um, I'm 
from Buffalo, New York. And um, I had a question. Mm-hmm. How do you think the Bills defense is going to do this year with them having all of these guys? And how do you think the offense is going to do with the addition of Stefan Diggs and Zach Moss? Well, I, I watched Zach Moss play. I'll start in the latter first. I watched Zach Moss play down here in South Florida in high school. And, and, and boy, you know, so um, I remember him as a young kid and, and watched him develop playing um, college football. Um, the offense with um, Stefan coming in, you know, that's the piece, I think, you know, the, to the puzzle that's been missing. Another year of, of, of experience for, for Josh, um, you know, looking forward to him blossoming into uh, one of the elite quarterbacks in the NFL. On defense, uh, my secondary um, ranks right up at the top with them. You know, I, I'll put them up against any secondary in the NFL right now. A young linebacker core, the same with them. Um, our two inside linebackers are – two premier guys. Um, Jerry Hughes is still doing his thing, uh, you know, coming off the edge. Um, so I, the interior line is just um, has been as stout as possible. You know, go back to um, when Sam Adams and, and, and guys like that were playing interior defensive line. So um, I, I truly believe that um, we have all the pieces to the puzzle right now. And it's just going to be, again, up to the guys to go out and do it on a weekend and week out basis. And, 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 and as a player, I, I keep on saying it and, and not buying into the hype. It's just, it's hard. It's so hard to do. And that's why I keep on saying it. It's so hard to do it. Uh, but, you know, you have to. But I think that's where Coach McDermott comes in um, with that cooling, calm, fatherly um, comfort for those kids to have um, and, and not buying into it. Like like Marv, I, I, I say it all the time about Coach McDermott. If there's a clone of Coach leaving, it's Coach McDermott. Thanks for the question, Nicole. Uh, Cornelius, having Mm -hmm. a strong locker room and buying into the hype or not buying into the hype, how important is it to to have a strong locker room room full of strong veteran leaders and compare it to when you were at the Buffalo Bills and what they have here right now with some of their veterans on the team? Well, I, you know, when when Coach McDermott first got the job, he brought all us old heads uh, together and we had a nice little sit down dinner with him and and uh, we expressed our concerns and thoughts, and he was, you know, gracious enough to listen to us old guys talk about our, you know, our past or whatever. And and what I kind of think he took away from that was having that, having that core group of guys in his locker room that can, you know, because it's the players' locker room. You know, most, you know, uh, coaches really stay out of the locker room. That's that's the guys. That's their home for, you know, seven, eight hours a day and, and, and um, coaches, you know, kind of under this unwritten rule to stay out of the locker room, whatever. And you got to have um, strong-minded, like-minded um, guys with the same um, goals um, in that locker room that will, that are willing to be leaders. And I think he's done a tremendous job of, of, of putting those guys in there. As I stated um, before about, um, you know, you can have all the talent in the world in that locker room, but, if they're not like-minded as far as I'm um, having the same goals um, set, uh, then it, 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 it's useless. And, and, and we've seen that not only in Buffalo, but in, in other sports where there's great amount of talent and, you know, guys making a ton of money or whatever, but they can't, they can't pull it off. They can't do it. And I think, you know, he's searched out and, and done his research and brought in guys that uh, are locker room guys, are locker room leaders, and, and also great talented guys as well. And how unique do you think is that to, to have a new coach come into Buffalo and reach out to guys who had success in the past, uh, the foundation of Buffalo in, in the 90s, uh, mm-hmm. the ones who went to the Super Bowl, how unique is that to, to bring, you know, five to 10 guys, however many it was, out to Buffalo, sit them down, have din- dinner, have conversation, get to know them, and get to understand the history of the Bills and what the Bills need going forward based on the success that you had in the past? Um, he's, on, he's probably only one of the 32 coaches that would have done it. And that, that's how, you know, coaches, um, especially, you know, head coaches, they don't really like outside influence whatsoever. They got to do it how they want to do it their way all the time. And, and even though it might not be the right way, they're going to do it their way. So um, it's a tremendous compliment to the type of person that Sean is um, as a head coach. Um, I'm, I'm always, I'll always be grateful for, for, for the invite to come there. And, and I think that's, to me, it lit another fire in me 
to become try to become more involved in Buffalo Bills football again. You know, I'm you know old dude and retired and down in South Florida, and I'm living you know the old man life or whatever. But um, I'm just excited for him um, and excited for the whole organization. I, it's I can't wait. I, I'm just waiting, you know, for today and then you know as the season progresses, I'm just waiting to see um, how the team progresses as well. Yeah, I'm really excited. I can't wait either. Mm-hmm. For all you on this call feel the exact same way as us. All right, Don, Scott, Nikki, you have our next question if you want to unmute yourself. Hi. I've um, uh, been a season ticket holder since uh, first or second year in the league in the AFL. Uh, wow. Mr. Ben, there, uh, Bill Polian traded for you back in mm-hmm. December. 87 from the Colts. I've been following your career. My son wore your number for, for his career. And I, you made a tremendous difference to the Bills defense. You made, when you came here, what an impact that had. Mm-hmm. How did your feelings change about the city of Buffalo? Because I'm a community guy, teacher and everything. And how did it change about the team later in your career and throughout your career now? It's Buffalo has always and always will be a special place to me. You know, that was the first, even though I got drafted by the coach, that was the first um, opportunity that I got a chance to perform on a, on a professional football field. So my childhood dreams, even though I got drafted by the coach, my childhood dreams didn't come true until um, Halloween day of 1987 when I got traded to Buffalo. That, that's, when it, that's when the reality really set in and me coming out of the airport there in Buffalo and being greeted by reporters and fans and um, that Sunday um, against the Redskins, um, walking through the stadium, going to do a live shot with CBS. Um, that's something that, um, you know, I don't ever talk about, but that's something I cherish forever and I will cherish forever, man. What a, what a great feeling. I knew I was going to be at home when I came to Buffalo. We cherish that too. Thank you. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Thanks, Don. James Parvati, you have our next question if you want to unmute yourself. Hey, Cornelius, good morning. Good morning to you, brother. Been a Bills fan since the days of uh, Joe Cripps, way back when uh, Joe Ferguson was the quarterback. And um, that run you guys had was, was awesome. And when you look at it, what is a, as a player, what was your uh, most memorable moment as a Buffalo Bill? You can th- remember Oh wow! The, the the first the first um, AFC East championship. You know they're in rich they're in the it was Rich Stadium then. So they're in Rich Stadium uh, when we pulled it off against these same Jets. You know, um, um, Fred's even though Fred Smurlis get credit for blocking the field goal or whatever. I I truly to this day I I mess with him all the time that I blocked it. I think I hit the first <laughs> and he hit the second, but he says it's the other way around. But um, the craziness of the fans, man, that's, you know, the pandemonium thing came about, you know, that was uh, Van Miller and, you know, a young John Murphy and, and oh man, it was uh, walking, you know, coming out of the parking lot and seeing the fans carrying the goalposts, that, that right there, man, that, that feeling, I think it, in, you know, that gave us something to, to truly, you know, build on because going into that season, I don't think many guys, you know, we had had a, when I got traded, we had had a so-so finish to um, the 87 season after the strike and all of that or whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, man, when we, when we turned it on, it just, um, it just, the light stayed on for a long time, man. It's, uh, it, it was a tremendous run. And I, and I thought people thought it, and, and us as players thought it would last forever, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, it didn't, but what great memories we have. And, and, you know, we all still hoping uh, to get back to those memories or to, or to you know, yep. to days like that. Definitely. Thank you. You're welcome. Cornelius, how often do you keep in touch with your former teammates? Um, sometimes daily. Our, our little core group of guys, uh, we have a little group chat. Uh, Bruce, Thurman, Daryl, Jim, Tasker, Will Warfer, and sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes Andre pops in or whatever, but the, uh, Chris Moore, our little core group of guys, man, we get together. We chatted up um, at least at least twice a week, and we've done that forever. We've taken you know family trips together, um, um, so I, that that that'll never change. That'll ne- that'll never. Be. We're brothers. When when you talk about being brothers, we're brothers forever, and that'll never change. 
we care about each other's families, everybody's well-being or whatever. Uh, we've been there for each other through ups and downs and all of our lives or whatever. So that, that'll that never change, Maddie. That's really awesome. Who Who's the most it active is. in that group text? Is it sometimes it's too active, you got to put your phone away, or are you one of the active people in that group text? No. No, it's it's we're all about the same. You know, we're all similar in age forms and and um, kind of all in the same places in our lives and what have you. So it's always it's 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 about the same. You know, um, we're still you know we're still old Buffalo Bills. That's all I can tell you. I won't reveal anything else. <laughs> does it does it go off during a Buffalo Bills game? I mean, are you guys are you chatting it's, with it's, it's random. It, okay. <laughs> no, it's random. It's just random. Uh, it's just random. It could be about anything, but it's 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 such a great, it's such a great way to grow older. It's such a great way to go uh, grow older. Uh, to have people that you know uh, that are you know not family, but they are. Uh, when it, you know, and and uh, to know that they're there for you whenever, however, or whatever. It's a tremendous feeling to have, and I'm so glad. Um, that that day in uh, October of '87 happened for me. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't I wouldn't have a, you know this relationship with these guys and 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 guys around the league that we played against. They are they won't ever say it, but they are really jealous of us. I know they are. They they know how close we still are, and and, and they see us when we get together. They want to join in. Uh, they do join in. <laughs> Do you think you guys were one of the tighter groups to come out of those years, uh, just knowing how much you keep in contact with each other still? No doubt about it. Um, I'm talking about league-wide. There is no wow. other group of guys as tight as we are. You know, when, even back when we were playing, we would go to the uh, Pro Bowl. You know, we were putting six, seven, eight, nine guys in the Pro Bowl area, it seemed like. And, and even at the Pro Bowl, uh, we would, you know, hold court at the Pro Bowl and other guys would slowly join in from other teams. And, and it's still like that now. When we see each other at functions or whatever, you want to be where the Buffalo Bills are. And that's been like that forever. You know, we we, we couldn't win the Super Bowl, but boy, we, we the the other parts that go with that, we had it all and guys wanted to be a part of it. That's why we never had trouble attracting guys to come to Buffalo to play when we were there. I think that's what's kind of caught on here within the last mm -hmm. years now. I mean, you get a player like Stefan Diggs and, and you start to add these bigger names in the league to the Buffalo Bills. And a lot of the players have said, you know, the league perception of this team has, has done a 180. Uh, they're now yes. known as a place that has a family oriented culture that treats their players how they want to be treated the locker room is close. They're friends on and off the field. It's a great place to play. And to hear that from players like Stefan Diggs, from players like Quentin Jefferson, it's I think it's an incredible to know how much this place has changed in the four years that Brandon and Sean have been there. And it seems so similar from your playing days too. Definitely. All now we just gotta gotta gotta, gotta be consistent on the field. Yeah. Um, that part of the community and everything that that has never changed, won't ever change. Um, the love, uh, the love from Buffalo, you know, football that won't ever change. I think it has even grown more because of the struggles of the past, and and people um, did get kind of comfortable from our era, and then you know we had a little lull there for a few years, and and here we are again. Um, you know, excitement is back in the air. We got a whole new generation of. Uh, Buffalo Bills um, fanatics out there, you know, Bills Mafia, I guess, you know, it should be the better word to put it in. But um, I, I love the fact that, that, you know, that has taken off in itself um, because it does help with recruiting players, um, you know, guys, um, you know, all over social media and they see um, the Bills Mafia stuff. So um, I, I truly believe that um, guys are excited to to want to come there. And they, again, I, I, it all goes back to, to, uh, Brandon and, and Coach McDermott, of course, the Pagoulias for buying the team and, mm -hmm. you know, forever grateful for them uh, keeping the team there in Buffalo. Man, uh, that that is, that is you know, got to give them props as well. So, um, this, the, you know, you got to have anything, got to have a great foundation if it wants to be um, successful and you want to build on it. 
I've been able to go to quite a few of the practices and especially during training camp when we could actually watch the entire practice. One of my favorite things is just watching the new players interact with the players who are on the team the, the previous few years. And you look at someone like Stefan Diggs and that guy had a smile on his face almost every single day. And it was so fun to watch him interact with players like Cole Beasley and John Brown and Isaiah McKenzie and even some of the rookies. It looked like they were having like a great time together dancing on and off the field. So it just made me feel so good about the guys that we have on our roster currently. Uh, Jeffrey Thomas, you have our next question if you wanna unmute yourself whenever you're ready. Hey, good morning, Cornelius. First of all, thank you for doing this with us this morning. You, uh, you just touched on the Bills Mafia and it's odd doing it this way and not being in the parking lot today, but for a organization that feeds so much off the crowd energy and the impact that that crowd can have on the opposing team as well, how do you think that plays out today with no fans in the stadium? Well, as, as far as, you know, a home field advantage, um, you know, it's a, it's a, always been a big plus in Buffalo, um, but I still think there's, you know, still a, some kind of advantage, you know, being at home, you know, you get a chance uh, to sleep pretty much at home in your own bed, you know, don't have to get on the airplane and travel or whatever. So um, that part of it always plays a part in the game or whatever, but it's, it's, it's going to be strange. Um, this is a new norm. Everything is, everything is new. Um, so that part of it, um, it it's going to affect both sides. Um, like the opposing quarterbacks, the crowd noise. He won't have to deal with trying to relay signals or, or checks or whatever to his teammates because of crowd noise. So that's out the window. But again, it's it's how probably how the first football games were played. You know, not in front of a lot of people, just people with concerns um, for that particular team, that you know, ownership or what have you. So um, it's just um, a birth of a new era of football. I guess the best way to put it. Thanks for the question, Jeffrey. I've got to say, I'm here at the Bills Stadium right now inside the building, and it was definitely weird uh, coming into work today. Usually you see so many RVs, you see people walking all over the place, the, the neighborhood, the houses around Orchard Park are, are packed with people. And today it was cloudy and it was rainy, and I think Everybody was pretty <laughs> upset. I think it was the Buffalo gods just upset that this place was not packed to the nines with people. Uh, so hopefully by the end of the year, uh, we can change to, to RVs being in the lots and, and people being at the games, maybe at least just people being at the games. But it was uh, definitely a feeling that I missed. And I remember going back to when the conversation started about, are there gonna be fans? Who knows? And Ed Oliver commented on his favorite thing was driving into Bill's Stadium on Friday and Saturday and then Sunday. And the best part was seeing the RV lot get bigger and bigger and bigger and more packed with people in RVs, uh, starting sometimes even on Thursdays. So he said that's one thing that he's definitely going to miss. And I feel bummed for new players too that they can't see uh, this town kind of explode in the days leading up to a game. So hopefully by the end of the year, we can get somewhere close to that. Uh, but we've got another question from Nicole Genzel. If you want to unmute yourself, uh, we're ready for you. Hi, my my husband has a question. Perfect. Uh, with, with the with Brady out of our division, do you think uh -huh. this year? Could you ask that one more time? I, I, it was a little I, I, hard to yeah, hear. yeah, I lost it. Yeah, yeah. With Tom Brady out of our division, do uh -huh. you have? Do you think we have a chance at division title this year? Oh, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. But but uh, now now don't 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 take New England for for granted. I mean, they didn't go out and just pick up a, anything for a quarterback. You know, oh, in yeah. my opinion, yeah, you know, in my opinion, uh, now instead of somebody that you know is going to sit back in the pocket and pick you apart, now you have to worry about. A guy that can pull it down at, at six six two hundred and fifty plus pounds or whatever that can pull it down and run you know run the ball for a touchdown or whatever. So um, I, I think uh, now um, they, you know they have a dual threat quarterback. But uh, again, all you want to all you want in, in in competition is to have a chance to win, a create a environment to win. And, and I think uh, overall, you know, uh, Buffalo uh, 
we've done a tremendous job at that, you know, with the, with the you know, hiring of, of McDermott and, and Bean and um, the talents that we brought in there. So all you want is a chance. You know, for so long, you know, those chances were very slim and mute or whatever, you know, with, with Brady and, and, and Gronkowski and the rest of those guys over at New England. But now um, everybody in the division has a chance, you know, uh, um, it's it's uh, you don't have to you know you don't have to worry or wonder you know it's just about going out and performing again as I said earlier and don't believe the hype don't believe the hype you know, got to go out and play I uh, I wish you know all us old guys wish that we can come in there and, and lend a helping hand but you know we're armchair quarterbacks just like the rest of you guys so it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's exciting though I'm, I'm I'm I can't wait to one o'clock I'm sitting there looking at my watch now we're getting ever so close to kickoff time yeah. Thanks for the question. And we're running out of time, but before we sign off, Cornelius, I gotta ask you, what is your favorite tailgating dish? Well, you know, I didn't get a chance to do a lot of tailgating. You know, I was performing for, for the people, but um, that's something that I truly like. And, and it's just a little dip, a uh, uh, little queso fundido dip with um, some browned off um, chorizo sausage thrown in there. And instead of nacho chips, you know, being an old country boy from Alabama, I like to use pork rinds to dip with. <laughs> Ooh. I use pork rinds, yeah. We get some old pork rinds and dip in that queso fundido there. And, and uh, that's one of my favorite. Of course, a good cold Coors Light never hurt anybody. So <laughs> wow, that's, that's my favorite. That's one of my favorites. Perfect. Yeah. Yum. <laughs> well, we just want to thank everybody who joined us today. And thank you to our Bills legend, Cornelius Bennett, for being with us. A big thank you to Connect Life for supporting our virtual tailgate breakfast with the Bills. Don't forget to donate blood to help save the life of a Bills fan right here in Buffalo. And don't forget to check out our Bills fan boxes designed by your Buffalo Bills by visiting BillsFanBox.com. Jerry Hughes designed a t-shirt. So if you guys want that t-shirt, you can go get one of those Bills fan boxes. Uh, Thanks for watching. Thanks for asking questions. We hope you enjoy the game today. We hope it's a big Bills win, and we hope you have a fun time tailgating from home and tuning in from home. We will see you next time. Go Bills.